Welcome back to the Shed Mini Fans. Uh, quite a simple one today. I'm going to go through how to attach one of these to one of these to make one of these. Let's do it. So what we've got here is a set of cast Omega plus 20 6cc dished pistons. So these are um, not the top spec that Omega offer, but they are still damn good pistons with their own supplied rings. These are standard 1275 rods. Um, I have already removed the gudgeon pins and original pistons, and I fitted two so far, but I thought I'd take you through my method. So these actual pistons <coughs> came from uh, Downton. Their X stock from Downton um, picked them up via an ex employee. I think he was actually a, a family member of, uh, of, the, of the Downton owners. Anywho, as you're probably aware, Omega pistons are the bee's knees of pistons for our little cars. So these have press fit, as they're called, um, gudgeon pins, meaning that they do not pivot within the end of the conrod, the small end. They're um, such a tight tolerance that they're actually captive in place and do not move. Therefore, we need to heat the little end to such a point that it expands and lets us insert the gudgeon pin. So, let me take you through my process. Okay, so I'm just going to gently pull out the the pin from the pistons. These are actually a balanced set as well. They've been uh, factory balanced sized, um, so they're all the same weight, um, as have my rods. Now, it's not just a matter of heating the end and whacking it through. What we need to do is actually offset the pin slightly as we push it through, because you'll notice there is a bit of slap. We've got approximately two millimeters of gap down the one side. Now, there are many methods to getting this right. I'm going to show you my way. Feel free to use it or not. So, in the classic style of Engineering Explained, let's turn to the whiteboard. So, what we need to do is effectively, this is a cross section of your piston. Now, the gap between these two, these two sides is approximately two millimeters wider than the width of the end of the rod, the small end, little end, call it what you like. So we need to measure the gap with the rod butted up against one side between the two. Then take half of that, and what we want to do is when we insert the pin, have the rod against the one side. As it goes through, we want the end of the pin Assuming the pin is the same width as the, um, the piston, of course, we want half of that gap poking out from the end, if you get me. I'll show you how I do it. Some people make a little rig. I just use some bits and bobs, but it does the job for me fine. So, this is my method. It's simplistic and it works, but you've got to get it set up right. So what I have here is a uh, immovable object. You could use anything, as long as it cannot move. So you'll see that this is currently set up so that the gudgeon pin protrudes precisely half of the gap seen here. Now please, please make sure that this can't move and nor can the uh, whatever object you've chosen. Also use a very, very light, only sufficient clamping force. You don't want to buckle, bend, scratch, do any damage to the piston itself. Okay, this is a one-shot deal. You cannot muck this up, because once this cools down around the pin, you've got five seconds or so, once it cools down, it's impossible to remove it without potentially doing damage. So you need to heat this end, evenly, all round, 
including part of the top part of the shaft, um, to around 600 degrees Celsius. Now, the, the there's no without some kind of infrared sensor or something. There's no way to actually know exactly that you're at 600 degrees. So what they say is to heat it until. Make sure you've cleaned off the inside of here so it's silver. See? You want to heat until that turns a light gold colour. They say straw, so light gold. Which with a standard blowtorch takes approximately five minutes. So, let's do this. Here goes. Up against the right hand side. In and to the stop. It's already grabbed. Now we leave it to cool. And so you'll notice that when I, when this is flush with the edge, the gap either side of the conrod end is the same, and that's what you want. Success.